good morning everybody uh, well uh, i always say and i feel uh, art has no boundaries and it connects across the world global today when we have a netflix we have amazon we see apart from english movies we see film of different languages because of the subtitle because of the connect which we go through the films <laughs> film is always a great connect throughout the world it influences it encourages it gets the perspective of what's going in the world and i think it's a very strong medium anywhere film has been influenced lot of people film has been inspiration for lot of people and this i am not talking film from indian film industry but anywhere in the world because film is a thing which moves you you get emotionally connect to it you get connected to the star you like the stardom of a star you you become a fan of particular actor actresses anybody so it's it's a great connect and nothing bigger than the film throughout the world now as for uh tourism is concerned i think there's always been a great thing to connect with the films in in switzerland there is a yash chopra ji who who basically uh, who just uh, was had a demise two years back uh, his cinema chandni lamhe so many movies he he shot in switzerland so it's become a great tourism part over there people go and see and they connect with okay this was movie was shot here this movie was shot here this movie was shot here so i feel and people normal people i'm talking about the layman also who maybe have be been he may be not a very uh, very educated in terms of movies literate but still even if he sees two movies so he connects with the uh, the, the location the, the 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 where it was shot so the, the connect is great and nepal has provided a exotic mystic backdrop in numerous films and it started i mean to say it's with hari ramar krishna one film of mr devanand which became a cult it became a film which really moved the songs the sequences the whole film was shot here and nepal came uh, on the global map and this is since that it i mean to say in terms of the films it became very popular it became very popular that it it will remain in mahan uh, khuda gawa kharwali barwali ek hasina diwan and recently i remember akshay kumar's baby was uh, shot here and nepal has all the things which films need i mean to say and that's not only bollywood i'm talking about hollywood also everything you have beautiful mountains you have snow you have himalayas you have the lakes and you have the adventures over here everything is there my only thing would be uh, for the uh, 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 development in in terms of the film industry there should be i don't know what i mean so much about it but i think there should be one window clearance for the people who come over here for shoot because what happened is usually when they go abroad to shoot so you have to take permission from various departments okay you take department from this department you go to that department or that department so i feel there should be one window clearance where the producer director and the people have gone over there they identify the location and they give the whole summary of it that these are the so many days you are going to shoot in this location so many days in this location and what the government also doesn't want uh, this sub location they may be restricted because of um, uh, the military thing or anything about the security thing so that also should be provided the same time film industry should not be uh, intrusive getting into a zone where security is concerned about it but at the same time i think the clearance of one window would be definitely great for coming and encourages i always in this behalf ke whenever there is shooting going in local people come over here and they shoot the local people get employed 
lot of local people over here, they get employment because shooting goes over here. And Nepal is basically not only Indian cinema. Indian cinema is huge. We have so many diverse cultures, so many languages, different, different states and big movies now, apart from Bollywood, which I hate, I would definitely say Indian film industry. So, I feel that apart from that, English movies, people who want to come here, shoot here, there should be a one single window clearance which gives a lot of preferential to the shooting and the comfort level. And I have seen in so many states abroad we have shot. So where you don't have to go to one to place to other place, you just go and shoot. Because the producer, directors always see there's so much money is involved and so much uh, uh, everyday actors come, the dates is there, so they don't want to waste the dates by taking permission and sitting over there. That is there. And I feel that whenever you should encourage more shootings over here because the locals definitely benefits with it because they get job, they get work, they, their skill has has to be uh, given more preferential because they are the citizen of the uh, country over here. And I personally feel nothing great connect than movies. I think these are the some aspects which I feel because there is, I can go and go but I don't want to because there are other panels also with me. But overall, this is my summary, this is my submission. And I think these are the things should be implemented and cinema will go definitely big horizon and length. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Um, the reason why I'm saying wonderful is, uh, as you know, I'm an actor, my passion lies in acting and in film, but uh, I have a very deep interest in travel and you know, just to spend my time in journey. Matter of fact, in, in, in when the romantic mood kicks in or in, in a time of jest, I sort of shared with my friend that given an opportunity and the right circumstances, I would love to travel for the rest of my life, you know, just hopping in from one destination to the other, one place, one country to the other, and just uh, disappearing in the horizon like the setting sun. <laughs> but, uh, but when it comes to traveling, I mean, we all know that we all love to travel. Most of us love to travel, and I'm not good at statistics, but even statistics shows that you know, over a billion people travel for pleasure. And surprisingly, most of the travel that the people do is, uh, most of the motivation and the inspiration they get is from what they have seen, mostly visually. You know, either photographs of friends and relatives, or it could be a popular cinema that have captured their heart and mind, or a TV program, or a sitcom, or a brochure, or a travel log that they have seen. So most of our travel, especially for the pleasure, are motivated and inspired by all these. And it is a fact, I mean, visual media is a very, very powerful media. You know, like you say, seeing is believing. And, uh, and even when we go to a destination, we like to relate to some of the experience that we have gained through our you know, by, by seeing in the movies, or by seeing in a travel log, or just seeing photographs of friends and relatives. For example, when I first went to Taj Mahal in India when I was eight, eight or nine, if I had not known about Taj Mahal visually, if I had not seen any uh, thing on television or in the movies, I probably would not have been as awestruck by Taj Mahal as I had been when I was almost ten, And the same thing probably goes with Eiffel Tower. I mean, imagine going and seeing an Eiffel Tower without having a previous knowledge about it at all, without not seeing the movies, not seeing the travel log, not seeing pictures of it, uh, and just all of a sudden going there without any previous knowledge. It probably would not have the same impact. And that goes with so many other iconic places around the world, you know, be it, uh, you know, Big Ben in London, or uh, the Statue of Liberty in New York, or the Empire State Building. And there are some other places which are equally attractive, if not more, uh, sort of get sidelined because they are not seen as much in movies or, or in any other mediums, in, in visual mediums. Uh, one thing that comes into mind is probably the Red Square of Moscow, which I was really taken aback when I went there. But then that is not much talked about and people really do not romanticize with it because it's probably not seen as much 
in the popular media and, and, and the visual media as, as the other iconic figures, or for that matter, the Summer Palace at uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, so cinema and things that we see in television and the things that we see in photographs and the brochures and the travel log hugely determines, you know, uh, our travel plans, where we want to go and what kind of uh, moods that we want to set while we go there. Uh, and the recent examples probably would be, we have a gentleman here from New Zealand, how the Lord of the Ring has affected the tourism of, of New Zealand. Um, it has not only uh, multiplied uh, the tourist influx in New Zealand by many folds, but I hear that they have even set up a Ministry of, of the Ring or something in New Zealand, if I'm not wrong, especially to cater to the tourists who have come uh, after viewing uh, Lord of the Rings. And closer to home, a lot of countries in Southeast Asia have been extremely a popular destination just because they have been the location of some of the popular films that have captured the hearts and minds of the people, the viewers around the world. I mean, if you talk about Thailand, there are certain places where people like to go in Thailand and say, ah, oh, this is the location where this film was shot, and they want to immediately con connect that place with it and have a completely different experience and feeling while they are there with this knowledge of having it seen in the film. And also, I think uh, Vietnam is another country that I can give you an example. Cambodia is amazingly another prime example because I hear that, I think the movie, the name of the movie was uh, Tomb Raider or something. And until then, I think it was, again, I mean, I'm not good with statistics, but until then it was, I think, about 40,000 people visiting Cambodia, but after that movie was released, uh, the influx of tourism shot 1,400 times. It went on to, you know, 1.5 million people started coming into a country like Cambodia. Um, and India is no exception at all, and Mr. Van Dacker was just giving an example of uh, Mr. Chopra, you did mention Mr. Chopra, who likes to shoot in Switzerland, and I think he was even, I don't know, officially or unofficially regarded as uh, the brand ambassador of Switzerland by the, by the Swiss government, just because so many Indian Bollywood films were shot in Switzerland, that the influx of the Indian tourists there started, you know, multiplying by many folds. So that is the impact of the visual media, you know, what people see in cinemas, what they see in their TV rooms, and with the social, social networks going on now, what they see, the pictures of their friends and relatives in traveling in different places, highly influences them, They're hugely. I mean, that might be even a sole reason for them to go to a, a different uh, places. And not only the attraction is there, but when they are there, uh, it becomes a, a larger than life experience, you know, because by itself it might not be nothing. Like I said, if you have no knowledge of Eiffel Tower at all, no previous knowledge, if you haven't seen it in any films, if you haven't seen it in any travel log or anywhere, or photographs of it, and you go there, you may not be even impressed, you know. But the fact that so much of it has been built up around it, in television, in movies, in cinemas, in travel logs, and friends and relatives that have been there and who have brought back visual materials to show it around, gives you a totally different impression when you are in that iconic figure, you know, you sort of intend to romanticize it and intend to take it in a larger than life uh, perspective of it. So that is the influence of the visual media, that's what it does. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, you know, um, we haven't been able to make the same impact here at home uh, because I mean we did have our share of uh, films, even a big budget films, even films from Hollywood or Bollywood who have come and shot here. But somehow or the other, you know, my uh, regret is that we have not been able to cash on it as much as other countries have uh, been successfully been able to do it. Uh, because I remember right about. 25 or 24 years ago, we had this huge production called Little Buddha, which was shot here in Bhaktapur. And then we, he mentioned about a few Bollywood films which were shot here. And there are a lot of uh, uh, big Bollywood stars of that era, probably almost all of them visited here and have shot the films here, right from your 
Amitabh Bachchan to so many other people. You, I think you were talking about Kudagava as well. And Kudagava, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, was like uh, Nepal was used as a duplicate location rather than the original location because they were shot shooting in Afghanistan and some sort of problem came over and they wanted to duplicate that location over here. And that way, we are so rich in a diverse geographical region in this country is that even if they don't want to actually sh shoot uh, the original locations here, they can always duplicate any locations around the world over here. You know, like a lot of Hollywood, Hollywood films, which are based in Vietnam's wars, have been shot in jungles in Mexico, but in movies it's supposed to be Vietnam. So even a duplicate location can take advantage of, 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 of filmmaking. Uh, and there's a lot of other films like... Uh, and, and the impact of cinema, if, if the country can take uh, the, 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 the advantage uh, of, of having a, a popular film shot in your country, the advantage is, is, is not just short term. It can be a very, very long term. You know, there are countries which have been uh, relishing uh, on the popularity that they had 40 years ago or 60 years ago. You know? I think Sound of Music comes to my mind. You know, Sound of Music was shot somewhere in Austria and they're still cashing uh, that uh, milking cow till today and there are some other films which were shot maybe 50 or 40 years ago in locations in Ireland and people still romanticize those locations in Ireland because they'll actually have a memory of those films or have seen it. So that is the power of cinema, just not the short term. If the, the film really takes the heart and the minds of the people, it can go on for a very, very long time and it can be, a, like I said, a milking cow for, for years to come. Uh, now, I was on the line of our own country, I mean, this, Nepal is, I, I humbly want to say that this is the most beautiful country um, uh, that I have, you know, like, I, I love traveling around, I love visiting, but there are some of the, some of the time when I'm in the mountains of Nepal or the lush jungles of, 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 of Tarai, uh, I enjoyed it, I enjoy that so much more than my so sojourns in in other countries around the world. I mean, that how, that's how captivating this country actually is. But somehow or the other, we have not been able to take the full advantage as much as we could, you know, uh, given the fact uh, the, the attraction of the country geographically, given the fact the kind of diverse locations that we have, and given the fact that how, if we really put our minds together, how we can attract people you also have to back it up with the infrastructures, the management, the systems, you know, that you, that calls for. He was talking about one of your system. Uh, all that plays a great role because in my experience, as far as my knowledge is concerned, what it tells me is when films, big films from Hollywood or Bollywood comes here, they somehow at the end of the day, you know, when they go back, they kind of go back with a bad taste in their mouth because uh, they had a perfect location, they really enjoyed that, that served their purpose, but somehow the other factors, you know, the bureaucracy and the other factors that plays a very important role in the day-to-day -day activity of carrying on with the business, has not uh, been very uh, impressionable for them. So that has sort of left a very bad taste in their mouth, and I think it was the case of like uh, killing a goose that lays a golden egg uh, from our part. So this is where the challenge lies, I think, with us, is that we have no dearth of locations, places beautiful, we have no dearth of uh, different types of uh, uh, you know, scenarios that we can give to the movies around the world, but what we need to back it up with is, is more uh, uh, high-grade infrastructures, the management, the system, the bureaucracy, all that we have to put in place because some of the countries that I have just spoken about where they have taken a great advantage of a great film being shot there have gone out of their way to please uh, the film crew, you know. And, and some of them even uh, have not only uh, been conducive when they have come and shot in their country, but they have actually, right from stage one, you know, they somehow have pull their strings to attract them to their country 
and to give them all the advantages and all the requirements that they need even beforehand, just to allure them into their own countries. So that's how people are, the people of different countries are operating, where I think uh, our own people's country is absolutely beautiful and has a lot of attractive things. I mean, I am from this country, but nevertheless, you know, even though I'm from this country and I've traveled quite a bit around the world, fortunately, I have a great affirmation for this country. And when I'm in the mountains of this country, so like I said, the lush forests of the Tarai, that's the time when I'm feeling the most wonderful and I think it's the best place in the world. But uh, in comparison to that, you know, we have not been able to take an advantage, I think, which we should. Thank you. I got 10 minutes to teach you photography. Okay, don't blink, pay attention. Um, namaste, uh, I just wanna say I, I'm just honored to be here with you know, two giants of cinema here. I, I feel unworthy. Um, but I would really like my presentation, if that's possible, because I'm talking about photography and it'd be nice to actually look at some pictures. All right, and I need the little clicker. So, because you know, my presentation, which is right here, I, you know, kind of, I need to move on from that. So anybody have the little forward or the button? Sorry. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the mad dash to find the... Sorry, just give me a second here. Uh, is it doing something? Is it not doing something? It's not doing any... Oh, here we go. Sorry, I'm going to get past all this. This was... We're going to talk about social media and the incessant demands of, you know, what we need for photography and, you know... I'm just going to get to the meat of it. Websites, blogs, you know, everybody knows here that photographs here are like our, our life's blood when it comes to tourism. This is how you inspire people to come to Nepal or to most any place. And every day, there are billions and billions of photographs being put online. And also that means that all of you somehow have to keep up with that in some way, communicating what you do for your country, for your city, promoting your, your experiences, whatever that is. So at the end of the day, I always feel that storytelling is the best way to go about... <laughs> there we go. Um, storytelling is the best way to communicate how your story. And then other people talking about Nepal or wherever they are is also a good way to sort of inspire people to come and see your destinations. You know. Tell your story the way you want it to be told. You've got to remember, you control this at certain levels, you know? But it's the problem is, is where are you going to find this content? You want to be able to tell stories to the world your way. So here are a few examples. If I can get the little thingy to work. I'm sorry. All right, sorry. Landscapes. I mean, you know, Nepal, that's, it's almost like designed to be a landscape mecca. You have your Himalayas, you have your lakes, you have all these natural resources here that there are very few places on the planet that are like Nepal or any other place. Use what you have to be able to sell, to inspire people. Talk about what you are. You know, this talks about like the, the Sherpa sort of uh, traditions and, and, and culture, because, you know, the, the stupas that they made. This is in, you know, beaches. Everybody loves blue water, blue skies. You know, this is how you inspire people, by, by talking about your locations, your places. This is Cuba at night, Havana. You know, this inspires people. This is a simple picture of somebody who was lighting candles at a hotel. And there's movement, there's color. Those are the kinds of things that I feel that inspire people to come see what you have to offer. And there's always a story. Show the best. I mean, this is like some dilapidated building but you still find beauty in everything. And I think when you, incur, when you look for the beauty in, um, in anything, that's where people get inspired. Everyone knows this. In a very rare sunny day in uh, Lukla. But this is a very famous place. Use your famous places. Cuba. What's Cuba known for? It's known for it's a lot of its architecture that's from the colonial era. It's unfortunately has been dilapidated for a lot of political reasons. But it's incredibly visual, very beautiful. And that's one of the things that people come for. That, classic cars. For, this is in India. I mean, texture everywhere, you know? The veils, the, the, the dresses, the, the doors. 
I mean, this is what people really want to sort of have mystery. It shows mystery. This is typical, trying to sort of use a lot of different elements in a photograph where it becomes the water, which is the Caribbean, the old cars, the rain. I mean, it has a romanticism to it. So there's another element you can use in photography. It's not like you're out there going to have to develop, develop these photography for yourself. It's really trying to find ways to where are you going to get this? And when you see the photography, is it what I need? Is it going to help me? Is it going to actually, you know, promote what I need, what, what I'm trying to, my idea? I mean, photography is powerful. In this day and age, there's a saying that says that the picture worth a thousand words, I think is worth even more now. Because people, the way they sort of go through, consume media, it's flicking through things, flicking through things. How do you get, nobody reads. How are you going to get somebody to click that link, have to look at what you want to, do, to offer? You got to have something that hooks them in. You know, and you show the best of what you have. I mean, just because you're poor or you're undeveloped doesn't mean there's nothing beautiful to look at or inspirational. Your culture is also a very big, important, uh, if I look at the little, yeah. all right. You know, this is in Ladakh, you know, a very sort of uh, Buddhist culture up there. But it's like, you know, it's just finding beautiful things everywhere you go to show, to highlight your culture the best way possible. That's what people want to come these days. They want to experience things. They want to, they want to be there, standing right in front, looking at that, experiencing that moment. And these are the kinds of ways you should look at photography as moments. And, sh and, and you're trying to present those moments to your audience. You know, this was like a Buddhist monks that were passing through. You know, it, it, it says a lot, that story. There's a mystery. You don't have to think of photography in a very literal sense, unless you're showing a hotel room. I mean, that's a very obvious thing. But, you know, I feel like if you really want to do storytelling, pictures should have to have mystery to them. Like, what's going on? Why is that happening? This is in Cuba. So it's, you know, use some of the, 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 the culture that you have, the very powerful things that you have here and wherever you're, wherever you're based. Like Cuba's famous for its dance and its boxing. You know, interesting things, outrageous things. I mean, this, for an American, it's like, wow. <laughs> People, your best resource, besides your landscape and your natural, is what you have in front of you. Your people are just amazing. This is like, I was hiding in this little hut up in the mountains of Nepal because it was pouring rain. And we were lighting the interior using, like, everybody's iPhones. And the whole village turned up just to, you know, look at us. <laughs> You know, but I think that one of the things you need to sort of use is, besides your culture, is also promote your people as approachable, you know, that people are, are you know, interesting, beautiful, friendly. You know, people want to come and see that. People want to come experience that. People want to come and take that picture. They want to be standing in front of that moment. You know, that's why it's important to connect. Use emotion. Emotions are an important thing about photography. It transmits, photography transmits so much more than information. It transmits emotion, it transmits uh, ideas, it transmits luxury, it transmits beauty, sensuality, emotion, all in literally the microseconds that you're looking at it. So you want someone to look at it. When someone looks at that, they go, wow, that's a happy kid. And they live in India or they live in Nepal. I want to go see that. I feel like these people are friendly and they're very engaging. Little moments that make people real. You know, not just sort of, uh, I hate to use the word animals or zoo, but they're not just people on display. These are real people. You know, having these little small moments everywhere. In Bhutan, these women, they're like superhuman, the women in, these, in this part of the world, I think. You know? <laughs> but look, she still took the time to stop and smile. I mean, this is the kind of thing that people really want to experience and on, a, on a deep level. Everyone knows what this is. This is Bhaktapur. This is here in Patan, these women that, that do uh, make knitting. Friendly faces, smiling faces, engaging faces, experiences. Yes, that's me over there. And this is in the dock. Uh, you know, promote your experiences. Make them exciting. Make them look like something some, you can't have any other place except where you are. You know, everyone knows where this place is. It's in Chitwan. Amazing place, by the way. You know, trekking to Everest. You know. You're making this like, this is just a simple walk up the side of a mountain. This is, looks like somebody's actually climbing it, you know? Use drama in all your photos, you know, try to engage your customers in the pictures. 
They love that. Selfies. Get your, get your employees to help create photos. Have them take selfies. Oh, let me take your photo with you. I mean, the more photos you have out there in the internet that sort of talk about what you do and who you are is your advantage. Also, it shows that your places are fun. People want to come and see. Uh, come on, let's go. We're almost there. We're almost there. You know, even a simple game of dominoes. In the beginning, it looks a little imposing. It's Cuba, because these guys look kind of tough. But, you know, they were like the friendliest guys. And everybody had a good dream. It's those little things that help people sort of, it feels like your family. It feels like you're in a, you come here and you're at home. Something to look at. People are engaging. He's probably still talking about his, uh, his, uh, his American wife. <laughs> That, you know, engage your customers at all times. Have them take pictures. Have you take pictures. I mean, if you have customers, I would even have photographers come on some of the experiences just to document some of the things you have so you create more content for yourself. It's all about having your customers actually help create content for you, and you do it for yourself. All right, so the big picture is you have to have a plan. You know, I think that a lot of people just sort of collect photography. Oh, I need pictures for this, or I need pictures for that. They, look, they think of it as a sort of a more immediate thing. You should look at it as a, a long, ongoing plan, building libraries of images. So that day that you have to rebuild your website, you don't start thinking that you need content at that point. It's too late. Where are you going to find it? It's going to take forever. It's going to cost you money. You know, and at the end of the day, quality is costly. You either have to have bloggers come and spend money on that or pay for professionals to do it. Find help. Very easy. There are actually professionals out there that can help you. The communication agencies, advertising agencies, design agencies can help you with some of this. At least they can point you in the right direction or even manage all of it if you have budget for that. All right. Devise a strategy that's that you need to do. Something you sustain over time and stick with it. Definitely stick with it. Because at the end of the day, you'd be surprised if you actually did a very simple strategy of collecting photographs, and in one year, you'd be surprised of all the content you would have that you control and that you can do whatever you want with it. And, and one more. Don't swipe. Everyone does it. I mean, it's terrible. You know, I mean, I went to a recent travel mart, and there were no less than five companies using the same picture to promote their own organization, to promote their wares. Thank you very much. I know it was, did everybody learn photography? <laughs> Fantastic photographs. I want to go to all those places, particularly Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> William, William, tell us what camera you use. Ah, it's a trade secret. Yeah. All right, anyway, um, before I open the floor for Q&A with the speakers, I have a question to uh, Madhurji. Have you ever planned to shoot a film in Nepal, or did you face any problems? Or do you have any plans in future? Well, I have never shot uh, in Nepal, but yeah, Nepal has been always, from my childhood, been a very, very uh, favorite destination. Always, this is my second visit over here in a span of 10 years. And if I have a subject and uh, which you feel ke it should do justice to uh, Nepal tourism, I will definitely make a movie, surely. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm really mesmerized with the kind of uh, you things over here we have, beautiful everything. And uh, if I have a subject, I will completely dedicate it over here, which will be seeing a different aspect of you know, the scenery, the beautiful, beautiful thing which you have over here. And in future, definitely, why not? She also becomes a very significant tool to promote Indian outbound tourists. And I believe nowadays every country is allowing or facilitating Indian film industry to come and shoot in their countries. Now, Nepal being so close, and we have a long-term history together between people, culture, and everything. And now there are air flights a day from Delhi. And um, beside this also, we could not flourish so much in terms of uh, film shooting here in Nepal. I believe other countries are uh, 
uh, opening up with more privileges to attract Indian film industry. So, Mr. Madhur Bhandarkar, it's my, my question to you. You as a director and a significant personality on the uh, Indian film industry, what do you see that Nepal is lacking to Nepal to make Nepal a most tempting destination of film, in the, uh, film shooting for Indian Bollywood industry as compared to other countries where the industry is going now? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, see, first and foremost, I would like to say any tourism in a state or any country abroad also, they have the tourism minister, the department, which goes and promote the department a lot. And that promotion today is can be done like by the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and all. So I feel there should be more aggression in promoting. That is very necessary. And why only India? There are other, other countries also who can come and shoot in, in, in Nepal over here. So I think it's very necessary. The, uh, the government, you should, they should have comprised of a board of tourism where they felicitate the, the film industry and they should go out to approach people that these are the things, these are the things we're going to provide. They should come with a proper blueprint where they should give location, there should be a whole, uh, you know, presentation of it. Ke, you know, these are the things which have, these are the things we can, we can provide you this, that and all, everything. So that initiative should have taken from the government, from the tourism department to reach people. People should not feel that, oh, if I go over there, I don't know how I'm going to be able to shoot. Will I get, you know, these facilities or no? Will I'm going to get this permission or no? This... Uh, so those things has to be eradicated completely and make a fresh approach to, to from your website for the tourism, for the film I'm talking about. So that will encourage the people. Like I said earlier also in my speech, ki there should be one window clearance. It is very necessary. So people, pe film industry people, they get very this, you know, anywhere in the world. They, they want ki the shooting should go without hurdles, without any problem. And that is very essential. So I think these are the things which if the government and the tourism board of uh, Nepal makes the initiative and approaches people and, and, and do little aggressive campaign. I'm just saying aggressive campaign in the way you all should say we are ready. Please come and shoot here. Obviously every film cannot be shoot, shoot over here because it depends on the script and the subject also. But still I'm talking about if, if these, these are the things can be changed, it can be changed, major change can be happen in terms of the subsidy, in terms of the uh, felicitation, what are you all are giving it, how much it is, the costing and all. Those things has to be put on the website and it should be an aggressive campaign to be done. Then only there will be more people approaching to shoot the film in Nepal. Uh, Besides aggressive, uh, aggressive campaign and one window policy. Let's not make it one to one, please, uh, Suman. Uh, please. Yeah, Who? Madhurji, okay. See, now, till now, we have got the Indian tourists, maximum 20, 250 lakhs. So I would like to request you, suppose our government will make a proposal for you to make a uh, good ambassador for tourism development and to, uh, to promote only 3 lakhs of tourists from India to Nepal. Will you agree? I didn't, I didn't get your question, sir. Oh, Can you hold the mic closer and speak? Yeah, what I mean to say, now we are, up till now, we have got 250 lakhs of tourists from India, okay? Two lakhs from China, okay? Now, what I'm requesting you, suppose my government will request you to work as a goodwill ambassador of tourism to India, just to increase three lakhs more tourism, tourists to come to Nepal. Will you agree? Got my point? Yeah, yeah, I'll 100% agree. There's nothing wrong in it. Yeah. Yes. Why would you not agree? There's nothing like it. And the ties of India and Nepal has been always been very mutual, very strong. And if there would be something which I feel the two countries can come together and in terms of the shooting and that, forget, forget that. I feel that there should be joint collaboration also between, you have Nepal actors over here and Bollywood actors over there. And it should be a joint venture also. Nothing like it. We should start with mid-level films. And we should escalate the budget in a level in a bigger way. So I would definitely be part of it. There would nothing would shy for it. All right, we got five minutes for Q and A, and we'll conclude. 
Rajesh ji has to catch a flight. Anyone there? Namaste. My name is Bibu Thakur. I'm the General Secretary of Pata Nepal chapter. Anyway, welcome all of you gentlemen on the stage. Thank you for your time. My question goes to William. What, your experiences in the mountains, the jungles, the rivers, you know, the nature, culture, the adventures you have taken. Could you be a little more explicit about it in very short term? I, I think, I think um, speaking from, from my perspective as an, uh, from, as American and who most of my clients are American, one of the things that uh, puts Nepal on the map is Everest. I mean, I hate to say it, most Americans are like, Nepal, where's that? So, you know, the only thing, to, but they know where Everest is and what that means. So I think that if you, the natural resources you have here help develop a lot of that, that, that mystery and that sort of like, that, that urge. I mean, Everest Base Camp is, Everest is like a bucket list thing. How can you make the rest of Nepal like that? You know, that's the, that's the secret, I feel. Um, and I think my experiences up in the mountains have just been amazing in the sense that, you know, this is such an amazing place that you come and visit and you could be, one minute you can have a bunch of people on the trail and the next minute you step into a valley and there's like no one else except a few yaks. So very few places like that on the planet. And I think that, you know, it's, it's something that it's, it's special here and it should be developed in a way that's responsible, that, that keeps that mystery and, and also brings in more people, obviously, to, to move things forward. It's my biggest dream <laughs> to see you. Спасибо большое. Спасибо. Let me give you a Russian hug. Thank you so much to our moderator and thank you to all of our three participants. And now on stage I would like to welcome the Nepal Tourism Board CEO, Mr. Deepak Raj Josie, to give the memento to all of our participants and our moderator. Thank you.